Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner and Classics as Non-Classics. This is episode number 815 and double shot number 709. I have two Marvel trades. One is actually, a, the first time we review is actually a really good series. The other one is a controversial one. I'll talk about that soon. First up, it is X-Men Magneto Testament. Written by Greg Pak. Artwork by Carmine... Del, Cam uh, Del Camaquito, I think it's pronounced the person's name. Mm -hmm. uh, the cover art in here, yeah, the, this artwork is actually really good. The cover art is not done by the artist, it's into yours. No, the cover art is done by. I'm trying to think, trying to see here. Um, I don't see anything else here. No. Yeah. Mostly put, this is basically. A uh, story about a young Magneto in the late 1930s, just prior to the outbreak of World War II, and his time in a concentration camp, which has been referenced since issue 150 when they established that he is, in fact, Jewish, and the fact he has actually spent time in a concentration camp and actually has numbers on his arm. Now, despite the fact now people will think of Magneto, concentration camp, okay, a lot of people tend to think of Usually the opening scene of the very first X-Men film where Magneto uses his powers for the first time to strangle some Nazi guards with barbed wire. Yeah. By the way, does he actually use his powers in the miniseries? Nope. He doesn't. He never uses them. He does, however, meet his future wife, Magna. Yep. This woman will later become the, his, his future wife and the mother of his first child. Yeah, Magneto's got two kids, though... If in fact Rick Mander had that done that super wreck on a few years ago, he would have had he would basically have had four kids. Yeah, that would have been just uh, I think it was his first one with Magna, Pietro, Wanda, and Lorna. He's now down to just two kids. Daughters. Yeah, Magneto currently doesn't have any sons because of a dumb retcon, which Yeah, the retcon is still very dumb. Mm-hmm. Yep. I gotta say, this is a really good miniseries. I know for a fact that this is actually sort of... When you read the series, it's a bit depressing, but it's well written. And also, some of the stuff that happens in here did in fact happen in real life. Yes, the kind of treasure camps from what I've read are actually really... I've seen pictures of these things. Some of them actually still exist, uh, though they're not open anymore. They're, they're basically memorials to people who actually have died. Yep. And yeah... I'm going to give this one a roughly a 9 out of 10. I want to give it a 9.5, mainly because of the whole Holocaust stuff. Now we're going to talk about a very controversial one, and some of the stupid things J.M. the writer had to do for this particular storyline. This is Sp Amazing Spider-Man Sins Past. Ooh, look, Spider-Man amassed some money, and it's Gwen Stacy. No, that's not Gwen Stacy. That's her daughter, Sarah. I'm not kidding. That's her daughter. Yeah, I have reviewed the sequel to this thing since remembered. Of course, that was a better story than this thing was. This is collecting Amazing Spider-Man 509 to 514. Written by J. Mike Gorsosinski, the guy who also created Babylon 5, and Mike D. Dow Jr. Great creative dude. I should point out, though, just prior to the storyline, uh, John Rian Jr., who had been the artist of the book since the start of JMS's run, actually left after the previous story arc. This is the first arc not done by him. And I got to hand it to Diodato. The guy is a fantastic artist. I really love this guy's artwork. And even here, he draws the person I'm going to talk about here. Like how he draws in other books. Now, why is this book considered to be sort of controversial? This book is controversial because of the relation of what, what was going on with the character Sarah and her brother Gabriel. You see, these two are the children, well, off, yeah, children of Norman Osborn. You'd somebody might be asking, who is their mother? Gwen Stacy. Yes, and it's revealed in here that apparently Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy slept together prior to Norman Osborn breaking her neck. Not kidding about that. I'm not sure who in the world at Marvel thought this was a good idea to do. I mean, creating the characters was fine. But revealing that no one Osborn slept with Gwen Stacy? Seriously? Why in the world did someone at Marvel thought this was a good idea? I highly doubt this with Casadas. 
he, even he probably would probably would agree this was stupid. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are probably. Uh, I I've never spoken to JMS about this thing. I've never met the guy, so if you get a chance to meet him or Dado, I'm gonna ask him whose bright idea was to do this this awful storyline. Yes, I will ask him about that. Yeah, and also how they. Yeah, here's the weird thing. Now, despite the fact in continuity, Gwen Stacy have been dead for about ten years at this point. These kit these characters look like they're in their twenties. That's because of artificial aging. No, seriously, artificial aging. Oh, yeah, I should point out, though, this is pre-One More Day. And also, because it's pre-One More Day, it's Harry Osborn is still dead. At this point, he's been dead since issue 200 of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Now, like always, whenever no one Osborn, because I can talk about him now, whenever he shows up in a book written by Mike Diodato, he has this weird thing of drawing him... Let's see if I can find a good picture of him. Yeah, I'm not really sure of why in the world that he does this for. He did it in Dark Avengers. Mm hmm Yeah, he did it in Dark Avengers. And he does it here as well. Let's see. Well, that's not a good picture here. Here we go. Yes, he draws him like freaking Tommy Lee Jones. Yes, apparently D. Donald has been doing this for years. Unknown why he uses Tommy Lee Jones as a character model for Norman Osborn, but that's basically what he does. Mm -hmm. Now, is this as controversial as One More Day? No. It still as bad as One More Day, yes. It's considered to be one of the most controversial storylines ever conceived for Spider-Man. I would say definitely. I would I prefer Clone Saga over this, because... Those of you curious of when the heck this story came out, this came out in 2004, the year I started reading comic books. Now, I didn't read this when it came out. I read this after it came out. Because, ah, that's better. I was slowly starting into comics at that point. Over time, I have eventually read a lot of Marvel comic books that have been published over the years. I have read every single issue of Amazing Spider-Man. And a lot of people will agree with me. This storyline is is really bad. I'm a little surprised Linkar has never actually talked about this thing. I know he's referenced it on the show, but he's never reviewed the storyline. He's reviewed one more day, but not this one. Nope. Never this one. So basically, it's been 13 years since the storyline happened. 13 years. Of course, after this... Sarah Stacy would pop up one more time in Sins Remembered. Yes, she pops up there, and after that, she's never seen again. But what about Gabriel Stacy? He pops up for at least two more times after this awful storyline. He pops up in Sins Remembered, and the, and the Amazing Spider-Man Presents American Sun miniseries. And that's it. Oh yeah, he also appeared in, I think it was Age of Heroes, so there was a backdoor pilot, and that's it. That's all they did. I think because this storyline got such negative reception that referencing it, basically, I don't think anybody's even bothered to reference the storyline since then. Now, they kind of had mild reference to it in American Son when they had Harry meet Gabriel Stacy for the first time. Yeah, but no one else was bringing up the fact that his mother is Gwen Stacy, somebody who Harry went to college with. Yes. I'm not kidding about that. Now, the artwork, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. The artwork is really good. The story, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. No, wait, not 6. Let's give it a 4. Yes, a 4. The reason why? Because the storyline is bad. But next episode, two more controversial storylines. Yep. Oh yeah, uh, Mary Jane Watts is in here as well. And I believe... No, May, May, and May Parker's not in here. But just just uh, Green Goblin, Gwen Stacy pop-up and flashback. Now, Osborne himself is nowhere in this storyline at all. Well, not in present day anyways. Mostly it's just Spider-Man and the children of Gwen Stacy. 
Yeah. I think maybe JMS was embarrassed by this storyline. That could explain why no one talks about it anymore. I mean, fans have talked about this storyline, but in the case of people at Marvel, Marvel, I don't think any, I don't think anybody at Marvel even references the storyline. But it, but here's the thing. At least it didn't draw as much hatred as One More Day. At least got praised for that, and plus. I got at least got praised with Marvel for actually having Diodato take over the artwork for Amazing Spider-Man at this point, because the guy is a damn good artist, and I think this guy should get a lot more praise than he should. I mean, people have praised artists like um, Ed McGinnis, Alex Ross, uh, the guy who's the artist for Black Panther. I don't remember his name. Um, I met him. I, I think it, I don't remember the guy's name. The guy is a really good artist. I'm trying to think of other good artists that are still going. Uh, Neil Adams. Yeah, he's still he still gets praise at those time. I don't think there was anybody else. Hmm. I can't really think of any artist but Diodato. No, he doesn't get talked about very much. Him and Alex Maleev. It's a little surprising though. These two artists don't get talked talk about very much. I. It seems like he's a bit of an underrated artist, but people do kind of know about him. But no one talks about Diodato. Don't know why. People talk about Jarmia Jr., but not Mike Diodato Jr., a guy who also worked on Wonder Woman in the 90s, though his art style was actually slightly different. Now, nowadays, it's a little bit more darker. I'm trying to think, though. I think the most recent book I did see him on, I think I did see him on um, issue 600 of, Maze, of, six, of Iron Man. I think that was it. Yeah, I can't think of anything recently the guy has done, aside from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, otherwise, so that's really it for this particular review. Stay tuned for next episode where I'm going to talk about the most controversial storyline for Spider-Man of all time. Yes, I will talk about one more day in the next episode. I have the trigger behind me. And no, I'm not going to burn the thing like Linkara did in his show. You'll get my thoughts on this awful storyline next episode, okay? But to see you there. Bye.